at you as you drive Hello and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Lorena. I am a kindergarten teacher and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you all things insects. So in kindergarten this week I'm going to be teaching all about insects up to my virtual learners and my hybrid students. So I'm going to share with you some of the things that I'm doing with my in-person kiddos as well as some of the activities that you can do virtually with your students. So let's dive right in. Um, I am using my center organization here um, which I got the idea from the kindergarten smorgasbord. board and I'm just kind of putting all of my materials there. We aren't really rotating through centers like we normally would, but this is where I'm placing all of my activities. So I have my pink ones, which are literacy, and then my green ones, which are math. So the first activity, which I also have in my TPT store, is an insect scavenger hunt. The version that I have on my TPT store is a little bit modified, um, just because I've been able to see how it works in the classroom, so I've modified it. But pretty much it's this, um, and I have, there's eight different versions, you'll see it. Um, so pretty much what the kids are doing is they're walking around with their little um, clipboard, and they are finding the insects around the room. Now I obviously don't have real insects, but I did purchase some um, pretend play insects from the 99 cent store. And as they are finding them in the classroom, they are checking it off and then coloring in the work. Um, I figured this will take them a little bit more time than just simply just checking it off. So the next activity that you can do with your kiddos, and it can be modified using the Play-Doh, is creating insects using Model Magic. So what I've done is I've given each kiddo a little Model Magic um, set, kit, whatever, and a piece of cardstock paper. So what they're going to be doing is they're going to be creating their own insects. So I'm using some of the materials from the Scavenger Hunt, which are the little name cards and the insect. And pretty much all that they're doing is replicating it on their cardstock. So they'll be writing a sentence. After they're done um, creating it and molding it, then they're going to paint it and they look so cute and they're so excited. And then I also make sure to emphasize like certain parts that we learned about, which is like the six legs and the three um, main body parts of an insect. So it's also a great way to kind of infuse the arts and literacy and math and science and all that fun stuff. Another activity that kind of hones in on kiddos natural imagination and creativity is setting up play-doh trays and what this looks like is you're pretty much using a play-doh tray and you're adding loose parts which can be play-doh um, loose googly eyes some pipe cleaners anything that you can find in the classroom and you can place it on the table and the kiddos can freely create an insect whether it's an insect that is a real insect or an insect that they invent or create on their own this is a great thing you can either leave in your art center or have them do when or have them do during free play or whatever it is or whatever your schedule allows for that to happen after they create their little Play-Doh insect, they can definitely share with their friends, which they all love to do. This is a great way to kind of get in those oral language skills as well. Of course, we couldn't go through the insect theme without reading Eric Carl's The Very Hungry Caterpillar, so we're going to do just that. So we'll be reading The Very Hungry Caterpillar, and then we're going to be doing a retelling. I'm doing this with my virtual kiddos, and I will link the Google slide that I found down below. So we'll go ahead and do the retelling together. After the retelling activity, I found a great directed drawing video that the kiddos can do, which is a directed drawing of the life cycle of a butterfly. So it's not just simply drawing a butterfly, but they'll be able to draw the complete life cycle um, guided. And of course, you can even, if you don't want to use the YouTube video, you can do it yourself. So let's say the video um, is lagging or something, I can just stop it and then the kiddos will do the life cycle with me. It's a great way for the kiddos to get familiar with the life cycle of a butterfly in addition to, you know, it being an art activity. So I am no stranger to directed drawings and we're going to be doing another directed drawing of an insect. However, we are going to be labeling this insect um, as opposed to simply just drawing it or something like that. So we're going to go ahead and follow the directed drawing and then label our insect. This is a great way um, to get those writing concepts in while also making it fun, having them use paint and having them use crayons. So this next activity I um, found on Pinterest and I'm going to tweak it just a bit. So pretty much it is a ladybug addition. Now I want to make it so that it's ladybug addition and subtraction because as we know young learners can get confused with the addition and the minus sign or sometimes they're just not paying close enough attention to it. So I want to make sure that I hone in on that. So I'm going to be creating a worksheet that looks like this and I'll link this below as well as a freebie. So they're going to be doing addition and subtraction on ladybugs using their using um, the speckles on the ladybug to solve the problem. Now we're going to be using Q-tips and black paint to do this, so it'll be a lot of fun and it won't be as messy. Another insect book that we're going to be focusing on um, and doing a craft with is in the tall, tall grass. So I was actually inspired by two Pinterest activities and I'm going to kind of infuse the two of them and create a project. So I'm going to be having the green paper, we're going to cut the grass, and this is great for their fine motor skills, and then we're going to be adding the very colorful insect behind the grass. 
um, and they're going to be writing a sentence on the top as well. So again, this is just a great activity that you can do to kind of incorporate literacy and then a supplemental craft or writing activity. Of course, you can't forget classroom staples, which are count the room and write the room. So I actually found, so I have this um, count the room in my insect folder. Now, I don't remember exactly where I got this from. I don't remember if it was purchased or if it was free, but I'm gonna try to find it and I'll link it below. If not, I'll link something similar to it. And pretty much what the kiddos are doing, as it says in the title, is they're going to be counting the room. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these insects um, all over the classroom. They're gonna take their little clipboard and they're going to count how many insects they see on the designated card. And the way that I have it organized is a very simple, um, the, these are extra worksheets, so last year, I guess I made a copy and we didn't get to go um, through with it. But I pretty much just put everything in a little Ziploc bag within my insect bin. And these iris bins are from Michaels. These are the thinner ones just because insect is something that we only do for a week. Um, but I guess as it expands, I can get a bigger one. Same thing with Write the Room. Um, there are so many insect Write the Rooms on TPT. So if you're interested in doing something like that, you can definitely find something online. And I'll try to link a few below so that it'll make your life easier. Another activity that you can do with your students is insect measurement. So I bought this from, or found this from, the Red Apple Teacher, and I put it inside of a pocket sleeve, and pretty much what the kiddos are doing is I printed out all of the cards, I laminated them, so I printed it on cardstock and then laminated this way they last forever. And the great thing about this is that it tells kiddos where to start. So if you see this like red little dot right here, this will tell them where to start and then where to end, because kiddos can measure it very differently. They can either do it from top to bottom, but this way it allows for you to kind of quickly scan and check and make sure that the answers are correct because they'll all be measuring from the from the same start and end point um, and what you were using to measure is just these cubes you can obviously use anything else you have in the classroom if you have any other mini beliefs that you want them to use another thing that I've noticed is just inside of the center activity bin I've been just placing a number chart um, this way it'll help alleviate uh, Miss Lorena how do you write this number I don't know what this number looks like I tell them did you look at the number chart? So just placing it somewhere that's super accessible to them um, during these centers will make it much easier, not only for the students, but for yourself, because they will practice being more independent and looking for resources that can help them learn. So this is the insect measurement activity. And as you can see, what I love about this is that it has the starting and the ending point. This way the kiddos are all measuring the same way. That way when they record on their recording sheet, all of the answers are the same. And something else that I give my kiddos is just a little number chart. This way, um, if they're doing this independently, they can go ahead and self-regulate and also independently find their own answer. So this is what it looks like. And it comes with a whole bunch. The kiddos just finished here. so. I'm filming so all you need is dry erase markers some connecting cubes or other manipulatives the recording sheet and you're good to go so something else that we're going to do that's insect related is i kind of just thought of this like on the spot and it's just going to be counting um and there as i say the number as i dictate the number to them they're going to write it down on a sheet of paper on the dry erase board and every so often i'm going to stop and i'll say crawl like an ant swivel like a caterpillar fly like a beetle so i'm gonna like throw it in there that way they have some pauses and some movement i feel like it's just a quick activity to do with them i figure i could even do this with um the ocean theme where we stop and we pause and we act like a certain animal or do an insect kind of movement so yeah that's what that's gonna look like and i'll show you in the next clip what it looks like when i'm teaching it one two three Six, seven, insect, fly like an insect. And last, but certainly not least, is we're going to be reading the grouchy ladybug. This is a very fun story about a grouchy ladybug, so I actually got this idea from Pinterest or Instagram, I'm not sure which one, but pretty much what you're doing is you're going to use a ladybug clip art or image and add the kiddo's grouchy face onto the ladybug. This is a great literacy, a great oral language activity. So what I'm going to be doing is using Jamboard. 
Um, you guys all know I love Jamboard, so I'm going to be placing a picture of a ladybug with the kiddo's grumpy face on it. And I'll use my grouchy ladybug as an example first. And then we'll talk about when am I grouchy, just like the ladybug. I'm grouchy when I don't get enough sleep. I'm grouchy when someone wakes me up. Um, different things like that. Um, so I think they'll be very excited to see their little grumpy face, um, their grouchy face on the ladybug, and they'll be able to tell me what's something that makes you grouchy. There'll definitely be a supplemental writing piece that can go along with it, which is they'll be able to first express when they're grouchy and then write and draw about it um, on just a blank sheet of paper. All right, so um, that's it for this week's super quick video. I'm just sharing with you some insect activities. I do hope you're able to get some ideas from this video and hopefully incorporate them in your classroom, whether it's virtual um, or a hybrid learning environment. So I will see you all when we talk about ocean activities for kinder students. Um, and until next time, stay safe and happy learning. Bye. Forever, forever. Forever I watch you as you sleep You don't know I'm looking With you everything is complete Do you know how much I love you? I put your favorite song on Just to wake you up When I dance around I can't help but feeling I'm just loving this moment can we say